From just a personal challenge in 1988 to one of the most beloved text editors in the world, the evolution and development of Vim is a compelling tale of individual ingenuity coming together, community-driven enhancement, and open source principles. Vim, for those unfamiliar, is a text editor, known for its efficiency, customizability, and powerful command-based interface. But it's more than just a text editor. It's an ecosystem with a unique approach to coding that has captivated programmers from around the world. One could say it all started in 1988, with Bram Molinar, a Dutch software developer, after he got the new Amiga computer. All he wanted to do was edit code in VI, or in his case, Stevie, a clone of VI, but it was buggy and frankly unsatisfying. So, Bram began writing a new VI port of sorts, a project he named VI Imitation, or Vim for short. However, the story of Vim truly began 19 years earlier with the creation of the ED text editor by Ken Thompson, which was one of the first three key elements of the Unix operating system in August 1969 at the famous and historical AT&T Bell Labs. Actually, many features of ED came from the QED text editor, short for Quick Editor, developed at Thompson's alma mater, UC Berkeley, in the mid-1960s by Butler Lampson and L. Peter Deutsch for the Berkeley timesharing system. Since Thompson was very familiar with QED and even re-implemented versions of QED that were notable as the first to implement regular expressions, it's only natural he utilized that knowledge while building ED, which went to become the original editor distributed with the Bell Labs versions of the Unix operating system in the 1970s. However, it was notably rather user unfriendly. So in 1975, George Colerice of Queen Mary College London developed an improved version of ED he called EM, short for Editor for Mortals, as he thought the cryptic commands of ED to be only suitable for immortals. While visiting Berkeley in 1976, Colores brought a deck tape containing EM and showed the editor to various people, including Bill Joy, who alongside Chuck Haley took code from EM to make EN by modifying it to be less demanding on the processor. Soon after, Bruce Engler encouraged Bill Joy to redesign the editor, and so he did. June through October 1977, Bill Joy added a full screen visual interface to EX, thereby becoming the VI text editor, with the name VI coming from the abbreviated EX command, VI, used to enter visual mode, or the visual interface. As VI and EX share their code, and VI is just the EX binary launching with the capability to render the text being edited into the computer terminal. Fast forward 10 years to 1987, and here comes Stevie, short for ST Editor for VI Enthusiasts, a now discontinued clone of VI written by Tim Thompson for the Atari ST. And for those wondering, no, Tim Thompson and Ken Thompson are surprisingly not related. <laughs> Tim Thompson posted his original C source code for this clone as free software to the comp.sys.atari.st newsgroup on June 28, 1987, where then Tony Andrews added features and ported it to Unix, OS2, and Amiga, posting his version as free software to the comp.sources.unix newsgroup on June 6, 1988, where we know at least one particular individual to have used it, Bram Molinar. But the most notable part about Stevie is that it isn't VI-based, but instead an actual clone. It did not use any of VI source code. This was important because VI source code used the ED text editor developed under, you guessed it, AT&T. And therefore VI could only be used by those with an AT&T source license. Sounds a bit familiar if you've seen my previous making of videos. So when Bram decided he wanted to create his own version of VI, he ported Stevie, which was bound by no such license. Bram began working on Vim for the Amiga computer in 1988 and publicly released the first version in 1991, known as Vim V1.14. And as a matter of fact, at the time of this first release, the name Vim was not an acronym for VI Improved, but instead an acronym for VI Imitation. It wasn't until late 1993 where this changed to be how we know it today, Vim VI Improved. After the first public release, Vim quickly evolved, incorporating features that were not originally part of VI. This included syntax highlighting, multi-level undo-redo, and a comprehensive help system, transforming it from a simple text editor to a powerful tool for programming and file management. And let's not forget Vim scriptability, allowing users to write their own plugins and scripts, which significantly contributed to its flexibility and popularity. The subsequent versions of Vim built upon this foundation, continuously adding new features. 
Important milestones included the introduction of a graphical user interface with Vim 4.0 in 1996, significant improvements in text rendering and editing capabilities with Vim 5.0 in 1998, and the introduction of features like tabbed editing and spell checking in later versions. Each version aimed to enhance user experience while maintaining the efficiency and command-driven approach that Vim users valued. Today, Vim's source code is actively developed and maintained on GitHub by a global community of contributors. This collaborative environment has been instrumental in keeping Vim relevant and powerful, adapting to the rapidly evolving technology and programming needs. As we enter 2023, Vim, now over 30 years old, remains a cornerstone in the world of text editing, not just sustaining, but thriving with a predicted market growth of 13.5% through to 2030. It's one of the most popular text editors in the world. Every year, the Stack Overflow Developer Survey finds Vim to be one of the most popular text editors used among programmers. In 2018, it was voted the most popular editor amongst Linux journal readers, and in 2019, determined to be the fifth most popular development environment, period. All of this, it's, it's just a testament to Vim's enduring design and adaptability in a rapidly evolving technological landscape. Serving a vast global community of developers and power users, Vim continues to evolve, promising new enhancements in user interfaces and collaborative features built by contributors from around the world. So yes, we have all of the open source contributors to thank for Vim, as well as the developers of Vim's predecessors like Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, Bill Joy, George Colorese, Chuck Haley, and Tim Thompson. But most importantly, we have to thank Bram Molinar an enthusiastic software developer that via Vim has touched the lives of more programmers and sysadmins than we can count. Unfortunately, Bram passed away earlier in 2023, and while he may be gone, his legacy he left behind in the form of Vim, his charity work, and his advocacy will never be forgotten. Bram, I say this on behalf of programmers everywhere, thank you. You will be missed.